I'm going to introduce you to Object Oriented Programming, that's OOP for short, using Visual Basic.net. I'm going to do everything inside a Windows Forms application to start with, just to get the basic principle across, but later I'll show you how to use a class library. I'm also going to go into more detail about the four fundamental concepts of object oriented programming that's abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. But let's just begin with the basics. Now I'm starting with the Windows Forms application, as you can see here, and it's a good idea to give everything a meaningful name. That will become really important later on. And also make sure you know where you're saving stuff. Okay, so I'm going to call this My Test App. That'll do for now. All right, and we'll pop a button onto that form and start writing some code. Let's just zoom in a little bit as well here with my control key and my mouse wheel. Now, if you've used vb.net before, you've probably already noticed that it says public class form 1 at the top here, and it also says end class at the bottom. So if you've ever written code in vb.net, you've already used a class. I don't want to talk about the form class just yet. I'm going to write a class of my own. But the form itself will begin to make more sense later. Right at the bottom of this file, I'm going to define a new cat class. That's right, a cat. A furry, four-legged pet. Perhaps I might be working on a new software application for a cattery. Notice I've written this below the Form 1 class within this VB file. And all the code I'm going to write from now on will be inside the cat class. First, I'm going to declare some public variables. And now I'm going to write a public procedure inside this class. It's a procedure that outputs what a cat would say if it was saying hello. At this stage, it's looking a bit silly, but bear with me for now. I'll show you something more realistic later. So, here's my cat class. And you can see what a class is. A class is code. To be more precise, though, a class is code that defines an object. Code that can be used to create an object. So, let's create an object from this class. In my form's buttons click event, I'm going to start by declaring a variable. Shall we say C1? And it's going to have a type of cat. Notice cat is in the list of variable types now. In fact, another name for a class is a type. Of course, it's not a simple type, like an integer or a string, but it's a type nevertheless. Now I'm going to write a line of code to create a new cat object. When this line of code executes, a cat object will be created inside the computer's memory. My cat will exist. It will come to life, if you like. Now, I'm always very careful how I use the word create when I'm talking to programmers. You won't ever hear me saying, I'm going to create some code. I write code. In the world of OOP, the word create has a very specific meaning. It means to create an object from a class. Now let's set some property values. I type C1 dot, and then notice the list of properties. I can select one from the list, I just use my tab key. And I'll give this cat a name. I'll give it a breed. Uh, I'm not an expert on cats, so I'll go with Moggy for now. I've noticed a spelling mistake there as well. I'll have to sort that out in a second. Breed is not spelt with three E's. And let's sort out the diet as well. Fish. Cats love fish, don't they? Notice that setting a property value is very similar to assigning a value to a simple variable. Now, I'll output the values of these properties. Oh. 
Notice that interrogating a property value is very similar to interrogating the value of a simple variable. Working with properties is very intuitive. I just precede the property names with the object name, in this case C1. Now let's write some code to call the say hello procedure. The public procedure has become what is known as a method or a behaviour. There are some other methods here which we got for free. They'll make more sense later when I discuss inheritance. Let's just keep it simple for now though. So let's run this code and see what happens. There are the property values that I set being output. I dismiss this message and there's the method call. Now I'm just going to fix that little problem that I had with my spelling. I'm just going to change the name of this property. Yes, I've spelt it correctly. Now if I take a look back up here in my application which is using the class, I've suddenly got some error messages because, what does it say, breed is not a member of my test app dot cat. In other words, breed with three E's is not a property of a cat. So I do need to fix that now. I've effectively broken this application by changing the public interface of my cat class. So let's just repair that very quickly. And that should be absolutely fine again. To summarize so far then, an object is a thing from the real world like a person, or a car, or in this case, a cat. It could also be something that you can't touch, like a booking for a cinema ticket, or a bank account, or a dental appointment. Nevertheless, an object is an entity from the real world that we want to store and process some data about. A class, on the other hand, is code. It's the code that defines a type of object. The class code defines the properties of an object. Properties are the characteristics of an object. They describe an object. They're often referred to as attributes. Class code also defines the methods of an object. Methods are sometimes referred to as behaviours or operations. Methods are things that an object can do or things that can be done to an object. My say hello method was a bit silly, but if I was coding up a class for an employee, for example, I might have a calculate pay method, or a method that will save the employee details into a database. We'll see some more realistic examples in later videos. OK, so let's take things a stage further here. I want another cat, so I'm going to declare another variable of type cat. And I'm going to bring this cat to life as well. I'm going to create an object from the class. When this line of code executes, I'll have a second cat. Right, let's set some properties. Yeah, OK, I don't suppose people feed their cats mice, but that'll do for now. And let's output details of this cat as well. I'll just do some copying now, I think. And let's call the say hello method for my second cat. OK, let's see what we get this time. There's my first cat, Fluffy. There's details of my second cat, Kitty. There's my first cat saying something. Oh, and there's my second cat saying exactly the same thing. All right, so I've got two cats which I've created using the same class. And of course, I can have as many cats as I like, which will all be instances of the same class. So, strictly speaking, an object is an instance of a class. There's just a couple more things I want to show you very quickly. First, I'm going to combine my declaration with the code that creates a new instance of the cat class. Like this. dim c1 as new cat. 
which means I don't need this line. I can do the same here as well. Dim C2 as new cat. Right, so I've just got rid of a couple of lines of code. That's fine, but it begs the question, why did I not just use two lines of code in the first place? Sometimes you want to keep your variable declarations together at the top of the program, but you might want to delay the creation of an object until as late as possible, which is why I would use two lines of code instead of one to create a new instance of the class. OK, now I want to release the memory that was being used by these objects. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm setting the object variables to be equal to nothing. Now the truth is, when this program stops running, the memory would be released anyway. The vb.net runtime engine, the so-called .NET framework, has a little subsystem called the garbage collector, which will free up that memory anyway. But those two lines of code could be used anywhere in the program to release that memory, if, for example, I want to free up some resources early. So I always put them in at the bottom of my program as a matter of course. I like to stay in control. Right, so let's just refine our definitions here. An object is a thing from the real world. It's an entity that we want to store and process data about. But it's also an instance of a class. A class, on the other hand, is the code that defines a particular type of object. It's a template for creating multiple objects of the same type. We say that we can create multiple instances of the same class, or that we can instantiate multiple objects of the same type from a particular class. Now, in this video, I wrote my class code underneath the form class, which, by the way, is used to create a form object when the start button is pressed. Next time, I'll show you how to write class code inside a class library. And I'll show you another way to code up a property using something called a property procedure. Then you'll really start to see the benefits of this style of programming.